Fam, we just found out that Julian Gressel won MLS Rookie of the Year. Surprised? Nope. But we're going to get into it. Coming up. What's up, Five Shrive fam? AJ here with you. Tanner McLeod joining me today. We're going to get into some Atlanta United news and you know a little roundup of all that. But before we get into it, Make sure to hit subscribe as we're going to cover Atlanta United stuff every single week. First, we're going to get into a player we all know and love, Miguel Amiron. The links with AC Milan, according to Calcio Mercado, they are false. They said that AC Milan has no interest in Miguel Amiron at the moment. Uh, it seems like, you know, maybe with that situation of they had a huge transfer window and they probably have a lot of money tied to a lot of players right now, so uh, it doesn't seem like they're actually going to, you know, do anything for Miguel Miron. What are your thoughts on it, Dan? I think that's probably accurate. Um, AC Milan spent massive amounts of money over the summer. Yeah. Um, they're currently not doing well in Serie A, and they okay. have a big, big check that they have to pay back for their debts right now. Right. And they've already said their goal was Champions League. Otherwise, right. they were going to sell a bunch of their players because right. they had to get that money back because they're in the midst of a very protracted takeover bid. Who knows what's happening with that? Right. But I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, I don't think that he actually is a player that would fit well in mm -hmm. AC Milan right now. They have a lot of players that they're you know that they're betting and trying to get to you know come together and adding another one in January. I don't think would really help with that chemistry. Right. I think he's a player that you know a lot of teams, whether they say they're interested or not, would like to have him because he's mm -hmm. very dynamic. He's fast. For sure. He has a great eye with the ball. Yeah. Um, he not can to mention finish. his work rate. His yeah. work rate's phenomenal. So yeah. I do think that teams are interested in him. But Tata's come out and said that he doesn't expect him to leave this summer, which I think is brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, there's been a few articles written about how important he will be when, once he does get sold, because yeah. he will break the MLS transfer record when he is sold. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'm happy. I think that it's smart that he's going to stay another season. I think right. that his star is going to get even bigger. Yeah. I agree with Tata when Tata says that, you know, he's one of the top three players in MLS, because I think that there's not a single team in MLS that wouldn't want to have him on their roster right now. For sure. So. Yeah, he's top three. Uh, you know, he was definitely, he's, he's in the MVP conversation. Uh, whether he wins it, it's yet to be seen. We definitely think so here, biased, but, you know. Uh, but, you know, maybe Valeri, Diego Valeri of uh, Portland Timbers probably has the best shout. But, uh, you know, hopefully we sweep all the awards that we are in. We'll see. But, uh, yeah, I mean... If, uh, you know, if Tata says that he's not going to go, I'm going to tend to believe Tata. He's got the, uh, you know, he's got that, that insight into probably how he's thinking. I think with how this organization's run, I think that if Tata doesn't want him to go, they won't sell him. Yeah. Um, apparently, we've already turned down offers for him, whether right. that's true or not, and they were right. big. I mm -hmm. think that... United know that they can get more than already than's already been offered yeah. by another season of him doing well, and I think exactly. that he will do well in another season because of right. how United play. Right. So I think that it suits not just United but also Almiron for him to stay because right. he'll get a bigger payday when he mm -hmm. moves on, and United will get a bigger payday when he moves on. Right. And I think we all know he will move on at some point. Right. But you know, if United is a club that can take these young players and then get their star big enough to where they can move to Europe, right. then we'll be making large sums from transfer fees. Exactly. And we'll also be succeeding because those players have to be playing well. Right. Otherwise, they wouldn't be going to Europe. Because exactly. that's not a, a bridge that many players do. If you right. come to America, you're usually in MLS. You don't really go. But if mm -hmm. you go from MLS and jump to Europe, that's changing the game. That's changing how things are work. Absolutely. So I'm excited about it. I'm glad. I, I want to believe Tata. Um, I do really believe Tata, and I'm excited that he's staying for another season. Well, we don't yeah. know for sure, but with transfer market and silly season exactly. in full force, but right. I, I expect him to stay. Right. Because, yeah, it, it's with all these sources, you take it with a grain of salt, some even less than a grain of salt. But, um, yeah, I mean, when uh, Tata says the goal is for you know Miguel Miron to get to Europe, that really is, you know, um, you know we, we definitely do see him going there. It's a matter of when, not if. So, um, you know, some players that, you know, may or may not go this offseason, uh, who do you have in mind that 
you know you see maybe moving on uh, in January. I think there's a couple of players that are definitely moving on. I, I don't see Walt coming back. I don't unless we outright bought him, but I don't yeah. think that's yeah. something. I yeah. think he still wants to. Yeah, he got a new contract he, from Tottenham. So I, I think they'd be impressed with how he's played and yeah. the versatility that he's shown. I think right. that he's a player that wants to give England another go. I imagine he wants so. to do that. I mean, right. that's his home. I think he still wants to make it there. Right. Um, Gars is an interesting option. I don't know whether or not he'll get picked up with his injury history. Right. You know, he was phenomenal for United this season. We absolutely loved him bombing down the left. Mm-hmm. But he's a player that may or may not stay. Mm-hmm. Assad's an interesting point because um, he would demand some more money than he had this season. Definitely. So we'd have to outright either buy down his contract with some allocation right. money, or or you know, or outright sign him. You know, mm-hmm. which is going to be difficult to begin with anyway. Right. Unless. They are willing to, uh, you know, loan him out again for us uh, because, yeah, his contract was very, very low. Was, uh, I believe at the beginning of the season was 150k, but that's on loan. Exactly, and I mean, you yeah. know, he would he would command a little bit more money with the way that he Definitely. played this season. And I think he deserves sure. it with how he Absolutely. played this season. Yeah. Um, I think one player that you, in my opinion, you know, is gone is Kenwin Jones. For sure. Um, I think he's easy to say right. he's going to be gone. He didn't right. contribute much in his appearances. And after, you know, the first few games of the season, he pretty right. much fell off the map. I mean, I think the for me personally, the Minnesota game sealed it for me and the fact that he just doesn't fit in to the style that this yeah. team wants to play. And even yeah. as an alternative, say, you know, as a target man, if we need to get a goal, he didn't do his job when he needed to. Against right. the poor team in Minnesota, he wasn't winning any headers. His work mm-hmm. rate did not combine well with the rest of the team. Right. He was never in the right position. His run weren't there and you know when we tried to whip in crosses to him he seemed to consistently be out jumped I mean he's a veteran player he's played a long time yeah maybe you know he he's just I mean I think he definitely has passed that's not something yeah. to stretch on mm-hmm. but and there's some knee problems apparently mm-hmm. that he had mentioned uh if you uh if you kind of creeped on his Facebook a little bit um yeah basically you know he had hinted of retiring so you know he's on a big contract, but you know, I think if he's going to retire, then I think it's it saves Atlanta United a lot of money, obviously. But you know, would he do it? That's also another thing too. Would you leave I all mean, of that much money on the table? I think if he doesn't want to retire, you have to find a way to move him on somehow. Yeah, um, I don't think that he's worth the wages he's on. I think that could be reinvested in other parts of the squad, which we right. need to invest in. Right. Um, you know, I think that. You're not going to get the same amount of minutes out of Lorenowitz and Carmona next season. Both are over 30. And if you look at places on the pitch where United are extraordinarily thin, I think central midfield is the place. Because Carmona was under the radar and underrated by a lot of people because he quietly went about breaking up all the play constantly. He was a destroyer for us in midfield this year. I loved him. Mm-hmm. But again, he's over 30, and if he goes down, you're going to have issues. For sure. So I think that that's a place you need to look to, to reinforce. I think both of them stay. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I'd love to keep both of them, but you know, Good. both being over 30, that's important. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what's going to happen with Parkhurst. I think he wants to stay, but also, I mean, he's what 36 years old. He's getting up there. Uh, I think he's like 33 or 34. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, either way, yeah. either way, he's getting he's getting up there. Yeah. Um, but you know, I don't think Mears will stay. <laughs> Um, I don't think so. Yeah. I think that as little after, playing time as he got. Yeah, yeah. Um, after the beginning when walks kind of came into the side, yeah. I think that you know Mears kind of faded out, and I I, right. I just I don't think he offers very much to be right. honest. He doesn't offer as much going. He offered this well statistically it says that he offers more going forward, but that was in a smaller sample size, and I don't really I'm not really inclined to believe that. For sure. I think he's a massive defensive liability. Yep. So I think he's another player that moves on, um, you know. So it's interesting. I mean, because yep. MLS rosters can change a lot for sure. over seasons as opposed to you know teams around the world. You know, sure. you usually have your core squad of players, and you might have three or four guys come right. or go. MLS can change a lot very quickly. Yeah. Definitely. So yeah, and so I, I see Atlanta United uh, being fairly busy this off season, mm-hmm. trying to shore up the spots that uh, they probably foresee. You know, with. Uh, uh, you know, either you know age or you know the uh, performance and stuff like that, but yeah, um, you know players like um, you know players like Carlton, players like Gosselin are going to come in and hopefully see a lot more minutes, um, you know. But with the rumor of uh, a USL uh, expansion team coming, 
um, that Atlanta United want uh, to get in before 2018, whether that actually is going to be able to happen. It's probably maybe a little too accelerated. Um, some say that maybe two, you know, like 2020 is probably the, uh, the best case scenario. Um, how do you see a USL fitting into our plans? Is it a good thing? Is it a negative thing? What, what's the good and bad for you? For me, I think it's a positive. Um, I, I think that it can't, I, 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 I don't really see any negatives from my perspective. Yeah. I mean, I think that there'd be a difference between the academy to the USL to the MLS. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you can get some more of those minutes to say like Carlton, who might be better than the academy level to where he, he's not going to really improve by playing against mm -hmm. that level of competition. Right. So I think that a USL would be good because he can play against other professionals. Mind you, it's not as high of a level, but it's still probably better than right. the academy. Regular level. minutes. And they would be getting yeah. minutes against better opposition. And yeah. you know, I'd love to see them play a bigger part in the first team sure. but there's not as many matches in MLS as there is in Europe you don't have yeah. as many cups you don't have as exactly. many you don't have the Champions League to worry about so there's right. you know a limited amount of minutes to go around and they are still teenagers they are phenomenal right. talents and I think that they're very bright features ahead for them but you know you're still going to tend to lean towards your seasoned professionals for sure so I think a USL would be great to to have you know players who might be recovering from a long-term injury, um, you see teams like Real Madrid and Barcelona do this in the second sure. and third divisions of Spain, mm -hmm. where they have their their academy players or their players who are hurt playing and going against you know professionals and exactly. getting those recovery I minutes, mean, almost in a sense of like how minor league baseball works sure. as well. Exactly, exactly. So I think it'd be a positive. I mean, I think that they'd be surprised how many people go out and watch them. <laughs> yeah. It'd still be professional league, so I think they'd be shocked about yeah. how many people are interested in that. I know I'd love to still go see some of those matches. Right. Um, I think that's the worry for some people is that, you know, uh, having that kind of soak up some resources. Uh, some people feel like even the like even though it is uh, an expansion side, it might be kind of exciting for people. Uh, it might wear off, and then you know you have this kind of thing that um, people aren't attending later on. You know, and it's just gonna you know get, not gonna be the best thing for the club in the long term or something. Well, I mean, I think that's an interesting argument um, that you know the crowd, but the crowds for USL, with the exception of some certain clubs who are coming to MLS in the future, isn't that great to begin with. Yep. So uh, I think that having an almost reserve team league, mm -hmm. I get that they're putting money into it, but I don't think a club right. like Atlanta United minds because right. if they think that it's going to help the development of players or help the recovery of players, right. then that's good for them. Right. So it gives them the opportunity to give them minutes to give, you know, more training to these players. Mm -hmm. um, I'd be curious to think what Tata thinks um, yep. because I think he'd have a large hand in how that's run. Definitely. Um, you know. Because He's probably had some experience with, uh, you know, Barcelona B and you know and all that. Absolutely. So. so I think that, I think that it's something that a lot of teams do. Um, we don't have, mm -hmm. you know, in in England they have a U23 league yeah. for even youth players, right. which is, you know, it's decent. But a lot of them are yeah. still loaned out to, you know, League One Championship, and if they're good enough, other Premier League sides. Right. We don't really have that here. Exactly. And as good as the academies might be, Atlanta United's academy is absolutely smashing people right now. Yeah. So yeah. I don't see how them turning up every week and playing other academies that aren't run as well, aren't funded as well, aren't right. as talented is going to help in their development because then they're just doing that and they might not have the opportunities in the first right. team yet. Mm -hmm. So that might stall their development a little bit. For sure. So I think that them playing as other professionals, mm -hmm. you know, whether their skill is great or not, right. will still help them because they're going to be going against men who right. might boss them around, throw some tackles and they're going right. to a bit of physicality and they'll learn how to deal with that. Exactly. And exactly. they won't learn that at the academy level. For so sure. I think exactly. it's a good idea mm -hmm. as long as the club is fine with the finances of it, which right. I think with how it's being done now, I think that sure. they will be. Right. Um, so I, I personally don't see any negative with it. I think it's a brilliant idea. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see it go forward. And honestly, it could help the USL if more teams do this Absolutely. because it could make it an even more competitive second league. Right. Definitely. Yeah. And there are uh, a good bit of MLS teams that already have, uh, you know, secondary uh, kind of squad teams playing there. And a lot of them say like the Timbers, the Sounders, uh, New York Red Bulls, who actually, uh, I believe, won the, the championship in mm -hmm. USL this year. So, you know, you have some top flight, uh, you know, squad teams doing well. And then our own affiliate, uh, Charleston Battery, um, I think there was this list of, 
you know, the, the top teams and it was, uh, they were in 18th they, in terms of playing, like, I believe under 23 or under 24 uh, age players. And so, you know, we, our affiliate didn't play that many of, uh, you know, the under 23 players as many as the other teams that are in MSL did, uh, MLS did. Well, so. I think that... The I think the setup with Charleston Battery was interesting to begin with. For sure. Um, I mean, I, I just don't think I think that it helps when the team is playing in the same city as you because Definitely. it's not a big. There's not a difference of travel. Mm -hmm. You can the the you they know can ta train together. Ta they could train together. Tata exactly. could bump down to watch an, an, an you know a USL match and see how yeah. the players are playing, developing which managers right. do, mm -hmm. as opposed to Charleston where it's like. They're not. That's a long distance to go. Exactly. It's not there. It's harder to keep in touch. It's harder to be like, hey, play these players. For sure. Or else, if you have a team that's directly a part of your club, mm -hmm. you know they can play the same style. Right. So they're training and playing the same way that they're going to play in the first team. Right. You can be like, hey, these. You know, you can control the players that are there better because it's here. Right. It'll mm -hmm. be run out of the same place. Right. So you know, I, I wouldn't feel bad about us ending our affiliation with Charleston at all. Yeah. Um. I think you know it. it it was okay, it was a decent idea, but sure. you know, I think that them also being a different club, like for instance when we played them in the US Open Cup, like for that sure. gives a very weird thing when they're technically sure. your affiliate club. You wouldn't have to do that if it's, you know, your own team. You exactly. know, because that would just make you don't Real that's not that doesn't happen. Real Madrid won't right. play Real Madrid B. B. Exactly. So right. you know, I think that having it all in house, all part of the club, yep. I think would be very beneficial. Yeah. And, uh, and the likes of, you know, um, Romario Williams, um, you know, that guy it was killing in USL. And so, you know, bring him over so that, you know, Tata can use him a little bit um, more so. I think he might be a guy that might be added to the first team next season because we'll need a backup striker. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll need some, some more uh, depth to, to handle the, the rigors because... You know, you saw the the fatigue factor throughout the season when you know we relied on our guys too much. We, and you'll have that again played. next season because you're going to have sure. the World Cup, so you're going to have a month exactly. where players aren't playing, and you're going to have that fixture pile up at the end of the season again. Exactly. I mean, I think Great this point. roster was put together very well for a team that was created out of nothing. I mean, you kind of sure. think this time last year the, the roster still wasn't even complete. Yeah. So Definitely. they're they've had a season, mm -hmm. they've learned. You know, for a team that was just put together to do as well as they did, it was brilliant. Yep. So, you know, now they have an actual offseason where this is what we look at, and with how yep. that club is run, they're going to know what their targets are. Right. They're going to know what they need to improve. They're right. going to know the positions they need to strengthen. And I think right. that this club deals with business in a very direct mm -hmm. manner and gets things taken care of. Right. So, and that's very, very which exciting. Which is very exciting. Yeah. And on that last piece of news, Julian Gressel wins MLS Rookie of the Year for 2017. Man, what an amazing year for that rookie who got drafted uh, eighth in the Super Draft and pretty much, you know, blew all the competition out of the water. The second place uh, was a Minnesota player. The, uh, you know, the averages of the percentage of votes, uh, it was 53 something percent for Julian Russell runaway. Oh yeah, I mean, five goals, nine assists, 32 yeah. appearances in all competitions yeah. for a rookie. I'm very impressed with him. I thought he was phenomenal. Yeah. Um, I think for me, his, the highlight would probably be his goal against Minnesota. Just sure. because the yeah. time, how it happened, his control. I mean, Definitely. it's obviously a frustrating Left result, foot. but like yeah. it was a phenomenal goal from him, phenomenal ball from Asad. But that was Definitely. probably for the standout part for me for him this season. Yeah. Um, he he was a great. I mean, he had some other. I mean, he had some. Whenever he had yeah. those moments, they were always good. I'm excited sure. for the guy, young guy. Yeah. You know, he has dreams of playing in the Bundesliga one year. Sure, yeah. And you know, if he keeps playing like the way he's playing, yeah. keeps improving, I think his goals and assist tallies will go up. For sure. I think he's going to play a bigger part next season than even he played this season. Right. Because um, I mean, he can really play anywhere along the front in that in the four two three one in that middle three. Right. Um, I think if you really want to go front for four, it, you, yeah, that yeah. front four, how, how they play. I think yeah. that really, he, if you wanted to be super aggressive, he could play in that middle two pair. Right. If you were really pushing and really pressing against a team either that mm -hmm. isn't very good and you're at home or a yeah. team that you just have to go and get goals. Right. Um, 
So I'm excited for him. I thought, you know, again, great season, great debut campaign for a young player. Mm -hmm. And I think if he keeps improving, then he could be another one of those players that, mm -hmm. you know, maybe not for the fee Almiron will command, but I right. think that he could be a player that could move, you know, back to his home country and double. play in the Bundesliga one season. Right. But I, I definitely see him playing for Atlanta United for a while because, yeah, I mean, he's got to get to those type of levels. Absolutely. You know, and, but... Where do we actually see him play? Like, I'm sure he doesn't actually want to be a utility player for the, you know, rest of his career in the MLS. So, you know, is it, uh, is it as a center mid? Is it as a, you know, a right mid? Um, or a cam? Like, you know. I think it really depends. He's a very interesting player in that he definitely offers a lot going forward. I don't think he's as strong positionally right. when it comes to his defending. Yeah. Um, so it's very odd for him because you know, if Almiron's fit, he's not starting in the 10 because right. he's not as fast and he's not as quick as Almiron. Right. But also on the right, he's not as quick as Ojalba. Yeah. And so I think it's interesting because I feel like he's a player that the players in front of him are better, but he's also just a phenomenally talented player who will continue to get better. Exactly. So it's interesting for him. I think that he might actually be suited better for a different formation. But yep. United aren't going to play. I mean, I think in a 4 3 3, I think he'd be great in a midfield three mm -hmm. um, as kind of Got like it. an advanced player going off of that right. because that functions differently. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that's something United are going to do with the players we have right now. No. Um, so I think right now, I think if Assad leaves, I think he's going to get a lot more playing right. time. He could. You could put Vajalba on the left and put him on the right. Yeah. I honestly would really like to see Vajalba on the left yeah. to cut it under that right foot. Exactly. That burn him a little bit. Just, oh, man. Just, I mean, the goals that he comes when he when he cuts on the right. that right foot are just incredible. So right. I'd love to see that yeah. as more of an inside forward type role. Right. Um, yeah, and Gressel's crosses are pinpoint, mm -hmm. and he always you know finds a way to get to the byline to... Uh, pull back, you know, Absolutely. that cross, and it's just, uh, you know, it's game over when it's that, because, you know, uh, I think a lot of his assists were that way, you know, uh, I can remember a Miggy one mm -hmm. that uh, Joseph won, at least, so, yeah, he's he's got a cross on him, for I sure. think that, you know, to not get too technical, but I think he'd yeah. function well as a bit of, like, an advanced playmaker on the right, Sure. because I think on the right was... Walks definitely overlapped a lot, but not mm -hmm. nearly as much as we would see on the left when Garza or even McCain yeah, would play. Right. So I think he could, you know, he could take up that wide space and drag them there. Whereas mm -hmm. on the left, if you put Vijalba over there, you're going right. to get that overlap, which is going to mm -hmm. give the the backs a lot more problems to deal with, right. which would give Tito a lot more space to, to do things. So I think Definitely. that that could be a way that he could be utilized mm -hmm. um, if you know Assad did leave, or if that's a way that they wanted to set up. At least that's how I think I would be awesome to see them set up that way. Definitely. Um, yeah. Um, I think we're blessed with an incredible array of attack, young attacking talent. Right. And different dynamics. Different dynamics. Well. And they all yeah. offer something different, which I think right. is nice because each match is different. Each team is different. For sure. Some matches he might be a better option because of his strength, his size. Right. And, I mean, he, he does have an incredible touch, and, and, and his cross is really good, which yeah. crossing is a bit of a lost art sometimes a lot of For people. Sure. And he, you know, again, five goals, nine assists yeah. for a player that played but didn't play as much until later in the season when Almiron went out. Yeah. You know, I think that he's got a bright future and I'm excited Definitely. for him. Uh, and Absolutely. I don't think, I don't buy into the whole, he has to nail down one position. I think yeah. that if he can play any position in that front four, mm -hmm. I think that gives him even more because he can just slot into whatever role we need him to do. Yeah. And I think that he's good enough to do that. Definitely. Yeah. I can see that. Um, yeah. Well, I think that brings it to an end. Thank you guys so much for watching if you guys are, are new to the five stripe fam please hit a subscribe you know if you enjoyed what you saw and what you heard hit a like uh every little bit helps you know and uh get in on the conversation you know let us know what you think about the off season what's going to happen who's going to stay who's going to go and for tanner mcleod thank you so much for joining me today absolutely appreciate it as always and uh yeah thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next video Let's go! Let's go!